This is a complex topic that I've been focused on for some time around the issue of unusual clotting that is occurring. Now, just in case there are people who don't or think this is about a conspiracy, just remember that microclots are real in terms of what we see in long COVID, where they're a tiny amyloid fibrin, um, fibrin microclots that have been looked at and seen. Then uh, what seems to put people off is when you talk about embalmers clots. These are large clots that embalmers have been pulling out. And I happen to come across a whistleblower who showed me real pictures of clots they pulled out of patients, putting his himself and his work at risk. And since then, I've been trying to look carefully at what is going on. And in the description below, you will find that there is a link to this Substack page. It has 282 likes. The truth will shock you. And in this was the very first breakthrough that they had with regards to information from 6,000 um, papers of, of documents that they had found that really gives an insight into what's going on. If you haven't seen this yet, you have to look at this. You can make your mind up after you have seen this to try and judge what to do with the information. So essentially what I'm doing is that I am continuing this scientific journey. And to put it in context, what I'm talking about today is linked to another piece of information that has been shared. And if it's a lot for me, I can only imagine how much it is for you hearing all of this. And so I'm trying to see if I can break some of this down into digestible bits and to keep the focus on it so people don't get distracted from the real science that's going on. So as I said, there are scientists all over the world doing work. And this is one of the things that they recently put out, where they were doing research on ORF, open reading frame proteins, that they were finding in the context of these clots. And you can see here, they were specifically, specifically looking at methyl pseudouridine translation and ORF. If you don't know what that means, that's what they have in the mRNA COVID vaccines. And you can see this huge document, and they are detailing here all the ORF proteins that they were looking at, the ones that were high, medium, and low probability. They were going through. So this is a very complex document that we are very appreciative of. And one of the things it showed is that there are more ORF proteins than just up to about, I think, 19, I'd thought. There's 11 to 29, 30 to 50. 50 to 79, all of them doing different pieces of work, up to 100 ORF proteins. So you may think to yourself, well, what is this ORF? What is this open reading frame? And so I'm going to take you back to a little bit of this science so you understand where that comes from. And I've been using this paper here, role of structural and non-structural proteins and therapeutic targets for COVID-19, SARS-CoV-2 for COVID-19. And this paper was is from India, Indian authors, and it was published in about February of 2021. So you have to remember they were doing this research before the vaccines actually were launched. So this is just purely looking at the virus itself. And what they found here is the breakdown of these proteins. So what you have here is the whole single-stranded positive RNA genome for SARS-CoV-2. And just to clarify, there's some people who don't think the virus exists. I don't know what to say there. Um, for me, it's pretty obvious that this is the case. Um, and so uh, we'll go back to that in a second. Let me just make this smaller so that you can see it here. So again, this is what it looks like. This is a whole length of it. And what you can see here is that this section of the, uh, the RNA for the virus translates ORF1A. That's one protein. It's a big protein. And then you have another one here that translates ORF1B. 
and you can see it down here. And within those, they break down into specific proteins, NSP1, 2, 3, 4, 5. These are non-structural proteins that are then formed. And all of them have a role in terms of operating inside the, um, inside the, the, the virus. And as we slide along here, what we had highlighted in the presentation before was this protein here, ORF10. We couldn't find a role for it in the uh, virus. And it was speculated that it seems to have clotting mechanisms. And this is the first bit of what we had looked at. So you have to go and look in the description, take a look at that video. But what I'm showing you here is all of these open reading frame proteins that are already inside the RNA. So this is the obvious bit, so to speak. And this is what we know from the research. Now, this is where it gets very complicated. And the way you have to think about it is now, is it possible to have other open reading frame proteins being formed within the structure that we've got there already? And that's where it gets very, very interesting because interesting and worrying, because as I showed you in the document first, they had up to a hundred open reading frame pieces in the virus. And the question that I had is, well, what does that mean? Because I am looking at the fact that bacteria are making unusual toxins. We don't know if the virus gets into the bacteria and makes them make more toxins. We don't know if it is specific proteins produced by the human, the cells, that then act as promoters for bacterial toxins, which can then make the person sick. This is, this is where it's going. At the end of the day, this is not just about a scientific question. This is about the fact that a lot of people are sick and we don't fully understand the mechanism. And it's causing people to have symptoms, especially clotting, which are very, very unusual. And so we have to try and parse this apart. So anyone who is ignoring this, I would advise you to ignore them because this is pretty serious stuff. And it's not going away because the virus is still circulating. And as I warn people, just because the infection is mild doesn't mean it can't do damage. It's the same with HIV. It's a mild infection. But if you leave it alone for two years, it will wipe out your immune system it seems that there is a similar pattern here with this very unusual, never seen before virus. So let's go on now to the part that is really worrying, okay? Because we have one thing is that the virus has been circulating and is still circulating. But at the same time, we also have given over how many doses of the vaccine? Over 5 billion people have been vaccinated, 14 billion doses. So here is a paper that doing this research caused me to look for, not the paper, but just to start searching for examples of, do we have any evidence of what I'm about to say? And yes, there is some evidence. And this is the paper, and this was from 2022. I'm going to make it a little bigger so that you can see where it came from. And um, and this paper here was just looking, asking the question, are there hidden genes in DNA slash RNA vaccines? This was from 2022, February 2022. Um, it has had 57,000 views. It's been cited 12 times. The main author is from Cambridge in the UK, and there are a number of other authors from um, uh, Czechoslovakia, I mean, Czechoslovakia, maybe. And they were looking at the implications of using the spike sequence and the link to ORF proteins. So what I'm saying here is that when we go back to the document that has been shared. And just so if you've come late, this is what was shared with us 
that there are a number of open reading frame proteins, this is 11 to 29, they think, impacts on viral persistence and post-translation control. I don't think it's active viral infection, but it leaves viral particles in cells. 30 to 50 is about immune evasion and clotting pathway activation. 51 to 79 is about disrupting mitochondria and ATP, that's energy inside the cells. And then down here, 80 to 100 is about persistence of, MR, of RNA and long-term immune suppression. So this is what they are finding in relation to the clots, and they are trying to extrapolate it backwards to see, well, if it's, if it's occurring in clots, where is it coming from? And this is where these, these proteins are, are coming to. So you have to understand, this is a, an investigation of the science to try and piece it all together and try and make sense of it. So when I get that information, I then think about it in relation to clinical presentation, in relation to what I've seen in research. And for me, usually I start to go back to figure out if this is likely to have happened before, or somebody is likely to have looked at this before, if they did, what did they find? And so, as I said, it came back to this question. Are there hidden genes in DNA and RNA? And that's my headline, the hidden code inside the vaccine. What else is being made? So here is now the scientific bit that is very interesting. When they and let me just get this right. I'll make it a bit smaller so you can see it. So what they then did in that paper is that they got the wild type virus and they looked at ORF1 in terms of this wild type virus here. And within that, they found specific ORF proteins that could be formed from that okay so you can see two three four five six seven it's, it's almost as if you could make the whole sequence and that's one protein but if you do a just a short sequence here or an overlap here you make different proteins and that's what they found with the wild type when they looked at the bnt 162 b2 this is the pfizer vaccine again what they're finding is depending on which way it's read, you can get ORF2 being read this way, or if you read it this way, you get ORF16, ORF11 this way, ORF3 this way, and all of this inside the mRNA. And similarly, they looked at the Moderna as well, mRNA1273, and similarly, they are finding that yes, there are potential sequences of different ORF proteins, but you'll notice they only go up to 17, 16, 17. Based on the research, is it possible that there are ORF sequences all the way up to 100, depending on overlap, because sometimes they will splice different pieces together to make another ORF protein. So this is where we have a situation that is really, really complex. And all I say to the scientific community, just put aside any bias that you have where you may think that, you know, because of the documentary died suddenly, everything connected to what embalmers are seeing is conspiracy. Fundamentally, they are just seeing something abnormal and they are raising awareness of it. And it isn't one or two embalmers that are seeing this across the world. A significant percentage are seeing these unusual patterns. Then, as I said, I have a different perspective because the whistleblower reached out to me and he showed me the images, clots I have never seen before. And this is just unbelievable. So for me, it's like, oh my goodness, we've got to figure this out. And then recently I had another doctor reach out to me and say, yep, I've pulled out a, a number of these clots post-mortem. So we know it's happening and there is no denying it's happening. We just don't know why exactly it's happening. Now, 
let me just clarify for some people. Some people will say, absolutely, this is because of the vaccine. I don't think it's as straightforward as that, because as I explained to someone, if that was the case, I would expect it to occur within weeks, maybe even a couple of months, and it would be latent there. And because we do so many angiograms every day in hospitals, we would be seeing this all the time, which doesn't happen. I still maintain that this, these unusual plots occur quite quickly. However, it must mean that the pieces required to put it together are already in place. How they form, that's really what we need the scientific community to do. There needs to be an understanding as to the mechanism as to how it forms, what exactly is in it. And luckily for us, as I said, there are scientists looking in detail at what needs to happen. And you can see here from this paper, you know, they are looking at the final summary. You know, they are looking at the ORFs 11 to 100, contributing to spike persistence. They're breaking this all down. This is a long document. This is not a few steps. They are breaking it all down and trying to make sense of what is going on with regards to all of these here. And they rank them in terms of risk. They look here, this is ORF 40, inhibits clot breakdown, ORF 43, alters plasminogen activation. So all of these things are going on in the background in terms of the research. So there's no hiding from this. This is going to be investigated because more and more attention is being put on it. And my role in terms of this is to not allow it to fall away. What that means is that it's one thing to talk about it now and people get excited and then they kind of fall away with it. I am saying that by consistently focusing on it, by consistently trying to make sense of the science, and trying to understand first what it's composed of, why does it form, what are the sequences that can occur to make it happen, then you can try and extrapolate whether or not this is infection, whether it's combination with vaccine or whether it's vaccine alone, whatever it is, there is still a lot of work to be done. But it's important to note that scientists across the world are focused on this. They have it like a dog with the, the between the teeth. They are not letting go, and they will keep going until we have all the answers. The question is, who in the scientific community wants the answers as opposed to standing on the sidelines? Because if this does turn out to be as serious as it looks, history will not look favorably on those who ignored what was obviously something they should have spent some time looking at. Thank you very much for listening. And as I said, look in the description below for the link to the Substack. If you haven't seen that yet, that is essential for you to understand what in the world is going on and what we're looking for. Have a great evening.